So for today's plugin video, I actually don't have a plugin. I have a whole piece of software called Storyboarder. Now storyboards are incredibly important for animators and they tell a story, but also they help you plan, they help you think through your animation. And this software, it's actually free and it looks absolutely epic and you guys should most definitely get it as soon as you possibly can because it's good to have it for the future. So let's get started with this video and I'll show you about Storyboarder and why you should get it. Let's do it. All right, so we are here in my desktop and this is Storyboarder. So I created like a test storyboard just to find out, but it's made by Wonder Unit and it's actually pretty epic as you can see here, just by this intro here, it just looks epic, it looks good, it looks clean and it looks like a piece of software that you would have to pay for, even though it's free. So major thanks to Wonder Unit. And basically when you actually start, you have some instructions on how to get started, but I tested a few things and I'll, I'll run you guys through it. So when you create a new storyboard, there's two ways to go about it and this is why it's so professional so you can select a script it needs to be very much in this format dot fountain or dot fdx and if you select the script it basically will load that script with the paragraphs and it will allow you to make a drawing to the paragraph so perfect for film vfx and tv if you guys do that and allows you to be a little bit more professional and allows you to kind of like present your work in a really cool way now for me i just want to like create i just want to actually have a brainstorm perhaps with some mates or whatever it is so i'm going to create a blank storyboard right here and then the next step that you have is what aspect ratio that you want right so i'm going to go with default 16 by 9 but as you can see you have all kinds of different aspect ratios including instagram style so i'm going to go with hd and then i'm just going to save it somewhere so i'm going to call it uh youtube um storyboard oh misspell and then create here it is when you actually load it up it looks like this right so you have a timeline right here uh, on the bottom and then you have some dialogue and and it's all good i'm just moving my my window around but i'll take you guys through this as you can see here you have a piece of paper and then you have different pencils that you can use as you go through it right i'm going to select it like a regular uh, pencil so you can see here that you know it's actually quite responsive i wish i could use my pen but unfortunately my cintiq is not really playing ball today but you can start to see why this is interesting because you can start actually making like you know your storyboards and apologies because i'm actually drawing with a mouse um, and it's pretty horrible but uh you can start to see like why this will be useful right so really nice and then you know if you actually want to go into the next one and now you have a new piece of paper and it's pretty much like any other animation software that as soon as you actually have like you know whatever you actually want to draw so i'm just going to like get some stick man right here which look horrible um like as soon as you actually have your drawings you can actually kind of like continue going from one to the other but the beauty of it, it then is that when you have a few you can play through it and depending on the timing that you have, it goes through your drawings and but stops in between. So it feels very much like an animation. Um, now you can actually kind of like go to your timeline and I'm gonna move myself over here. Go to the timeline and then start reordering your shots if you like, right? So you have two options here, boards and timeline. So this is basically where you go. I actually want this to happen before here if I, if I decide to. So now it goes from this drawing to that drawing to this, right? Um, now I'll go back to this and I continue working on my boards. Now you can select a bunch of different things. So for example, if you have a highlighter like I have here, you can select any color that you want to actually be your color, as you can see here. Um, you can also kind of like go ahead and actually move your drawing around to make sure that you maybe you want to select, put a character more to the left or more to the right. You can also uh, zoom in and zoom out of your drawings if you decide that they're actually slightly too big or too small, which is pretty nice. And then most importantly, you can lasso around an object here and then move around that specific object. So very, very impressive, right? Now, um, you also have different things such as um, adding lines to your um, board. You can actually add like some uh, grids as well. 
the rules of three thirds, which is incredibly important right here as you go through it. And you, then you cannot add like onion skinning to one specific drawing. And this is interesting because to me as an animator, as I'm doing my boards, I would like to see what I just drew. And if this character is just walking, walking slowly towards this side here, I would like for that drawing um, to actually kind of like be in keeping with the previous one, right? So this is actually incredibly useful um, as you go through. You also have a little button here that says Photoshop. When I click it, my Photoshop opens and I can actually edit my drawing that I just made, the one that you can see on screen here in Photoshop. And I'm just gonna like hover over, but this application that I'm hovering over, it's basically Photoshop. So you can see here, that I can actually add it to that layer if I wanna beautify it or add color or for some reason want to actually kind of like change anything in Photoshop, which is pretty cool. Now, one of the coolest features, and this goes for everybody that doesn't really know how to draw, illustrate and all that stuff, is that you can see here, I'm gonna move myself here to the middle, uh, you can see here that there is a shot generator. This is actually quite powerful. So if you click on it, um, this new window shows up and this window looks very much like a 3D scene. So like a Maya scene, right? You can tell there's a camera here, which is pretty cool. And then you can actually see here that there's some options right at the top. So we have more cameras, more objects, characters, lights, etc. Now, if you actually want to add your character to your scene, you can go ahead and just click character. Um, and when you do, watch what happens. So now you have a character that you can actually rotate in 3D and you can actually pose, not animate, but just pose to make sure that you get something interesting on your shot, right? So as you can see, I can actually like pan and tilt and do all kinds of stuff via, via this cursor here or not. You can also uh, change your lens, make it wider or uh, shallower, and you can rotate your character as you wish and also pick like on bones to make sure that you actually pick up on like exactly what you want to see. Now, when you have your shot, let's say this is my shot right here, um, right there. Bam, looks beautiful. So if, when you have your shot right here, um, obviously you can add guides on top and all that stuff. But when you have your shot and you're ready to actually add it to your board, you just go here and then basically save to a board, which means that adds it to the board that actually was there just before you opened this, uh, this section, or you can insert it as a new board, which I will not right now. So if I close my window now, you can see here that I have a new board that I'm just gonna remove this onion skinning. Um, I have I have a new board right here that actually now is part of my sequence. So, um, and if I go to my timeline, I can change it to be my very first one because that looks much better than any drawing that I did previous. <laughs> and that is basically story border. Um, it's incredibly powerful. It's really, really um, easy to use. You basically have all the tools that you need to create storyboards. If you have a Cintiq like myself, as long as it works, like mine is not working, you can actually have so much fun putting together shots and thinking about shots, especially if you actually wanna do something for your showreel or if you wanna work on it professionally, you can just use this and then make a few, even if you actually do just stick man, just to see how it flows, how it goes, especially for camera angles, what works best. It's a really good tool. Plus, you stop actually being in Maya all the time inside of Maya, and that is normally a blessing because stepping away from your shots from time to time makes you see your shots much more clear. So if you are working on something and your animations are starting to look really good and you want to put a camera in it, might be a good thing for you to just come out of Maya, go to a, a, a software like this, take a, free, a few screenshots of your shot in Maya, right? And then kind of like, start manipulating it to make sure that you can draw over it and try to find the nice camera angles, right? I mean, the storyboarder here gives you a shot generator so you can actually move your camera about and gives you a character as well so you can frame it. So it couldn't be easier than this. So there's no excuses for you to kind of like not play around with storyboards when you're creating ideas for your shots. And that is all. <laughs> so thanks very much as always to my Patreons and everybody who's been supporting me every single month. And definitely, if this video is useful, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, drop a comment with your thoughts about the storyboard, or especially if you start using it. And as always, have a great week. Until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.